Hello everyone, welcome back in today's tutorial on microservices. In today's tutorial, we are going to see what are the top 5 characteristics of microservices. So let's start today's session. Very first characteristic is microservices can be broken down into multiple component services. We know that the enterprise application is made of several components. Those are grouped together like the front-end, the middleware and the back-end. And those work together. Now, if we have the multiple services or if we, if we need to achieve the complex operation in the single service, the service itself become a very complex. Now, in order to disintegrate, in order to divide into smaller components, the microservices is a good approach. What is the reason why we need to disintegrate into small services? The reason behind is each of this service we can deploy, we can change or tweak and redeploy independently without mm -hmm. compromising the integrity of, of an application. As a result, or as an end result of that, we might only need to change one or more service instead of making impact on the whole application. But along with these benefits, it comes with some drawbacks also. For example, if we are going to build a small services, the remote calls will be more costly because it has to go through network compared to a process call if you write the if you write the logic in the same web service or the same complex web service the calls will be in process those are less costly compared to a network or remote remote calls another disadvantage about broken 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 down the complex service into the smaller one is the coarser grain remote APIs it's more challenging or has its own drawbacks it also increases the complexity when we redistribute responsibility between the component so if the each component has its own responsibility and if you're going to distribute a given responsibility across the small component the complexity becomes a major concern so these are the this is the actually very first characteristic microservices can be broken down into multiple component services definitely it has the benefits with a few drop drawbacks the second characteristic is microservices style which usually organize around business capa capabilities and priorities. If you think about the traditional monolithic development approach where different team come together and has their own focus. For example, we can have the user interface development team, we can have the database team and we can have the middleware team. So each team has their own focus in monolithic development approach <clears throat> and they utilize the mon uh, they utilize the their own team to focus on that one component at the end result they will combine these all three components and build the enterprise application while the reverse case or the opposite case with the microservices Microservices, in, microservices involve the small teams and they work with each other like UI team, middleware team and database team. They work with each other. It's called as a cross-functional team. So the end result will, will be more positive compared to monolithic system. The responsibility of each team are to make specific product based not the project based so we will be targeting the how our product will be more 
appropriate more stable more compatible with the changing environment rather than working or the concentrating concentrating on the project requirements that means if there is any change comes on any component we don't have to change a complete project or it is not have going to impact the whole project rather it will just impact the one component that means not all the team members will be of impacted with this change it will just impact the few developers or the few team members also we don't have to wait for budgetary approval because it's a individual component impact and not the whole project most development method focus on project a piece of code that has to offer some predefined business value but in case of the micro service we must hand over to the client the periodically maintenance by the team in micro services a team owns the product for its timeline if you see the code from the amazon you build it you run it so that does me mean, it means if you use the micro services we have to deal as a we have to treat as a product not as a project so at the end the micro services target or the focus is on the capabilities and the priorities of the business and not just a few business requirement which runs around the project next characteristic of microservices microservices receive request process the request and generate a response which is user friendly or the caller friendly this image illustrates there is a caller which sends a http request to a system system process it and generate response and send back to caller so this is one of the example it is not necessary that request is always http or the response is always http it could be a json response it could be a xml response or the xml request too if you see the structure it is something like the unix where it receive the request it process it and respond back this is opposite to how many other product for example example if you know this enterprise service bus that is esb it just the it receive the request and it put in the queue it does not respond immediately like it could be a sync call now we could say that the microservices have the smart endpoint it's it 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 as good as the suppose es if it is treat as a esb but it has a smart endpoint that process information apply the logic and give the response to that request this is very straight forward concept the microservices receive the request process it and just give the response back appropriate to caller the fourth characteristics of microservices is it involves a variety of technologies and platforms this is a big thing the reason i'm saying big thing is nowadays everyone thinks about the centralizing the system decentralizing is a old concept however with the with the emerge emerging of microservices decentralizing again coming back into the picture so we are actually dividing the complete whole system into the small component decentralized governance is favored by the microservices community because it's a developer strive to produce useful tools that can then be used by other so once you build that can be used by many other developers for their usage so individual don't have to spend or don't have to write the same logic again and again the best example is netflix netflix is a service responsible about more than 30% of traffic on web 
the company encourage its developer to save the time by using the code which is developed by the other user. Of course, the developers can change the code as per their need. The microservices is quite opposite to monolithic system, which uses a single logical database. Microservices encourage us to use the multiple database. So, the microservices not only gives the opportunity to use the different technologies on the front end side, but also it allows or encourage us to use the multiple database for each component if you want. It is just recommendation that does not mean we have to always use the multiple databases for each services. The next thing about the microservices is microservices are designed to cope with failure. Of course, every system can come with the failures. They might one of the service might fail with some system failure. The other system might fail with some or traffic. So there are n number of reasons with which system can fail. The important thing is we should come up with a solution for that failure. And of course the microservices support that. In this uh, several cases, client should allow its a neighboring service means if one service goes down the other service should be available to use and that is can be achievable in the microservices system so of course microservices are designed to respond properly for failures and finally microservices architecture is an evolution evolutionary design and it's ideal for evolutionary system if you think, if you go back 10 years, you might see the technologies were different. They are more focused on like computer system. Nowadays, the systems are more focused for mobile devices. In future, it could possible some other kind of devices will come and this current system will no longer will be valid to support those. The microservice is the best solution for that. They can, this is an evolutionary design and it can, it can best suit for the evolutionary system. In future, something new system comes. The microservice is going to support that too because this is a flexible design, this is a smaller component design. Now, if you want to conclude, what are the characteristics of microservices? So here are the things we just discussed. Microservice architecture uses services to componentize and usually organize around the business capabilities. It focuses on product instead of project. It has smart endpoint, but not so smart into the flow mechanism. It also uses decentralized governance as well as decentralized data management. The microservices is designed to accommodate services interruption. So if there is any fall or there is any failure in the system, microservices definitely get rid of those. And the finally, microservices is evolutionary design. These are the top five characteristics of microservices. There are other several characteristics, but these are the main important. I hope you are enjoying this video. If you have any questions or queries about microservices, you can definitely mention in the comment section of this video. Thank you for watching this video. Have a nice time.